If you are currently receiving Social Security before your full retirement age and you are also working, there is a limit to how much money you can make. If you go over that limit, your benefit will be reduced. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the 2024 Social Security earnings limit and explain to you how it works and how much of your benefits you are going to lose if you go over that threshold. Now, if you are currently receiving benefits, this video applies to you. If you are thinking about receiving your Social Security benefits before your full retirement age, which for some of you is 66 years or 67, then it's important to pay attention to this video so you know what to expect and especially how this affects spousal benefits. And then I'm going to answer the seven most frequently asked questions about working while collecting Social Security early. And then you want to stay till the end of this video because I have a bombshell report from CBS News that says that over 1 million Social Security and disability recipients are at risk of losing their benefits because of overpayments. Some of this overpayments is because people are working while on Social Security and are not reporting their earnings appropriately. So years later, the Social Security Administration will find out and then will have to take their benefits or some of it back. So let's get right into it. If you are new to this channel, I want to urge you to hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, please hit the like button so that it will be shown to more people. So let's talk about eligibility and retirement. So to be eligible for Social Security, obviously individuals must have, must have at least 10 years of earnings, you know, or 40 credits. And the earliest age you can claim Social Security is 62. But individuals can choose to claim any time between 62 and 70. Why is this important? Because it's going to lay the foundation for what I'm going to talk about regarding the earnings limit, especially for those of you who are getting ready to take Social Security early. Now, the full retirement age is, you know, has gone up recently. It used to be 66 and then it creeped up a lot by two months all the way now it's 67 years for some people so here's what the full retirement age looks like if you are born in 1955 it's 66 and two months if you're born in 1959 it's 66 and 10 months and anybody born after 1960 your full retirement age is 67 so if you're taking benefits early there are a lot of reasons why you would want to do that and working while taking benefits is one of them. So, you know, most people take it as soon as they are eligible. And that means that you're going to get 30% less money. And so the reason why people work while on Social Security is that they are put in this situation where they need the income, you know, because of circumstances that are happening. So they need to take Social Security early. But they lose 30% of the benefits if they had waited until their full retirement age, which will maybe if you take it at 62, that will be five years later if your full retirement age is 67. So when you take it early, some people take it and then they also work out of necessity or by choice. And so this post is to explain that earnings limit when you are working while on Social Security. So workers who start Social Security before full retirement age and continue working may have a part of their benefits temporarily withheld if their income exceeds a certain limit. The key word is temporarily. The retirement earnings test exempt amounts, which says this limit are expected to increase in 2024. It increases every year because of the cost of living adjustment. So estimates suggest that 2024 limit is going to be 22,000. So I have put it here in detail. So 2023, if you were working while receiving Social Security and you haven't reached your full retirement age, you could make $21,240 a year or $1,770 a month. You won't get, you won't lose any part of your benefit. If you go over that threshold, then for every dollar in benefits that you, you know, for every, every $2 in earnings above the limit, you're going to lose $1 in earnings. So 2024, which is where we are now, you you can make $22,320 a year and still receive Social Security before your full retirement age and not be penalized or have a portion of your benefits taken back. 
However, if you go over the $22,320 limit, then for every $2 that you go over the limit, you are going to lose a dollar of your benefit. So let's say that you go over the limit by $500, then you're going to lose $250 in Social Security benefits. That is just simple math of how it works. Now, when you are at your full retirement age year, so workers who start Social Security before full retirement age and continue to work, you know, obviously are going to lose part of your benefits. But when you reach the age of full retirement, then that year where you're hitting your full retirement year, the limit is more generous. So in 2023, you can make $56,520 a year that year and not lose anything or $4,710. That limit has gone up to 59520 a year and the withheld amount is also more generous so when you hit your full retirement year and you're working while on social security you can make $4,960 a month without losing anything and if you go above that limit for every $3 you go above that limit on your full retirement year you lose only $1 so you can see the limit is higher and it's more generous during that time. Now, reduction in benefits and delayed credits. Now, claiming Social Security before you're reaching your full retirement age results in a permanent reduction in your benefit amounts, which means that you're going to lose that 30% of benefits. The reduction percentage decreases gradually with each year of delay until reaching full retirement age. So between 62 and 66 or 67, depending on when your full retirement age is, each year that you wait to collect your benefit, you get 8% more. So for each year delayed beyond the full retirement age, individuals earn a delayed credits, they are guaranteed 8% more. Delayed benefits credits, however, do not provide any additional benefits beyond age 70. So you can claim Social Security between 60 and 70, but after 70, your benefits do not go up. Now, what does Social Security consider income? Well, the sources of income, the earnings limit that we talked about, applies only specific to some sources of income, including W-2 income and net earnings from self-employment. So when you think of the income limit, it's when you're actually working or have a business and you're getting money from your self-employment. Other sources such as dividends, interest from savings, pensions, distribution, IRA and 401k distributions, capital gains, annuity payments do not count towards your earnings limit. So if you're getting all these other sources of income, they do not count towards your Social Security earnings limit. Now, there is an impact to spousal benefits. If an individual claims benefits early and surpasses the earnings limit, it will also impact spousal benefits if applicable. Both the individual's benefits and the spousal benefit will be affected because they are based on the same earnings record. So if you are claiming Social Security early and you're working and you go over the earnings limit and your spouse is claiming Social Security based on your earnings record, their Social Security will also be affected. However, the case of divorce, you know, when there's a divorce, Claiming a spousal benefit from the former spouse's record does not depend on that former spouse's earnings. Now, let's talk about this rule, this particular earnings limit rule. The ability to claim Social Security benefit at 62 and the introduction of penalties for exceeding the earnings limit came about through amendment to the Social Security rules. Initially, women were allowed to claim benefits at 62 and later men were given the same option. The combination of claiming benefits early and exceeding the earnings limit led to penalties, including the suspension of benefits until the excess amount was reconciled. So if you are considering claiming Social Security early, while claiming Social Security early might make sense for some individual, it is most it's, it is not often the most beneficial strategy, excuse me, for those with significant earned income. The decision to claim benefits early or delayed depends on the individual situation and financial circumstances. So there is this theory out there that 
you know, you should claim Social Security as early as you can. And if you don't need it, you should invest it. Well, investing the money instead of claiming early benefits may seem like a more lucrative option, but it often involves higher risk and potentially less income overall because there's risk associated with investing. If you put it in the stock market and you go into an aggressive investment strategy, you may lose money. Comprehensive and personalized financial planning is therefore needed. So if you're going to do this, if you're considering claiming Social Security early and investing it, then make sure that you have a financial advisor that is really analyzing everything, how much money you need, when you need it, before you make that decision. So how do you optimize your retirement income? Well, optimizing your retirement income involves considering the various factors like the time value and of money and opportunity cost. So basically, the whole point is that there are so many things you can do if you're thinking about claiming Social Security early and you feel like you want to benefit from Social Security as long as possible while you live, then make sure that you have a financial strategy in place because that is what is going to determine whether it's a wise decision for you. Because if you're also going to be working, you have to look at everything that is coming in and make sure that from a Social Security benefits perspective, your tax benefit perspective, that you are making the informed decision about that. So next, let me answer questions about working while collecting social security. These are the seven most frequently asked questions we get about working while claiming social security. So the first one is, does the social security administration look at a single or joint income when determining how much money they're going to take from your benefits before you're working because you're working? Well, the earnings test is an individual test. If you and your spouse each receive Social Security benefits based on your work history, your spouse's excess earnings cannot turn off your benefit. Your benefits are insulated from each other. However, if anyone is collecting benefit from your work and you have excess earnings, their benefits will be affected. So this is very, very important. If you got, you know, if, if, if you're married, you're collecting Social Security based on your own earnings history, your spouse is collecting Social Security based on their own history, then your excess limit is going to affect theirs. It all affects you. However, if you are collecting Social Security and they are collecting Social Security also based on your record and you have excess earnings, then their benefits will be affected. So if your benefit has to be reduced, then theirs will also be reduced. Number two, question number two, what happens to the withheld benefits? So remember I said that if you go over the limit, Social Security is going to reduce how much money you get. For every $2 you go over the limit, you're going to lose $1 if you are not at full retirement age. And then at full retirement age, for every $3 you go over the limit, you're going to lose $1. What happens to the money that they take away? Well, if your benefits are withheld due to earnings limit, they are not gone forever. All your full, at your full retirement age, the Social Security Administration will run a calculation called the adjustment to the reduction factor. This calculation ensures that your ongoing permanent benefit can only be reduced for the months in which you receive a Social Security check. The months where you didn't receive a benefit due to being over the limit will not count against your reduction due to early filings. Your benefits will be recomputed at full retirement age and the reduction factor will be adjusted accordingly. So the money is not gone permanently. They're going to do a calculation when you get to full retirement age and adjust your benefits and give you credit back for what you have earned. How is the earning test applied? How is the earnings limit applied? If you exceed the limit, the Social Security Administration will typically withhold several months of benefit at a time. For example, if your monthly benefit is $2,000 and you go over the limit by $10,000, they would withhold your benefit from January to March. In April, your checks will resume. So this is a big deal. This has real consequences. So if you're working while over... So that's why... Um, the, the overpayment story I'm about to cover is so critical for you to wait for because this is what has been happening to some people because they are earning over the limit, they don't know the limit, and it's been going on for a while. The Social Security Administration then finally catches up because the IRS is reporting everything to the Social Security Administration, and then boom, your benefits get cut off. 
and sometimes for by a long period of time and you don't even know how long it's going to be or you weren't even aware that this was going to happen because you were also dependent on your social security benefits. Question number four, should you inform Social Security Administration if you will be over the limit? If you're going to go over the limit, should you tell them? Well, the answer is yes. It is recommended to inform the administration if you know you will be over the limit. You should, you should file a work report with the new earnings estimate. While this may result in your benefits being withheld, it is important to avoid getting into an overpayment situation, which can be difficult to resolve. So... I'm going to cover the overpayment story, and you're going to see why this is the case. It is a pretty, pretty serious deal. Number five, question number five. When does the limit switch from an annual to a monthly limit? The Social Security Administration recognizes that some people may retire mid-year after receiving an earnings over the annual limit. In this case, there is a monthly income limit. The monthly earnings test apply when an entitled beneficiary has one or more non-service months in a calendar year. After the first calendar year of receiving benefits, it reverts back to an annual test. To calculate the monthly income limit, divide the applicable annual limit by 12, which I already did in my um, original picture that I showed that explains the earnings limit. Question number six. Will the earnings limit affect spousal or children's benefit? If your benefits are stopped due to the exceeding the earnings limit, it will affect your benefits and any benefits paid from your record. However, there is an exception for ex-spouses collecting spousal benefit. Their benefits will not be affected if you go over the limit. So it will affect your current spouse who is collecting benefits based on your record, but it will not affect an ex-spouse who is collecting spousal benefits based on your record. Finally, question number seven, what counts as earnings? Well, gross wages from employment income and net earnings from self-employment income count against the earnings limit. However, income from pension payments, annuity payments, IRAs, and other retirement account distribution, as well as dividends, interest income, and capital gains do not count towards the earnings limit, it is important to know that there are additional rules for self-employment individuals regarding the time spent in the business. So, now let's get to this bombshell CVS overpayment story, which I am really, really looking forward to sharing with you. If you like what you've heard so far, please hit the like button so that this story will be shared with more people. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. We really appreciate the support. So, what is this system in the story about? Well, overpayments is a growing problem and over 1 million beneficiaries are at risk of being affected. And Anderson Cooper of CNN did this story and I think he did an excellent job. And the title of the story alone should be very jarring to you. It says, Social Security Administration, our mistake is your responsibility. It means that when the Social Security Administration makes a mistake in calculating your benefits, it is your responsibility to find out, report it back to them so, for, so that they can adjust your earnings. Because if they discover the mistake years later, they can still come back and get money from you. I am going to give you three stories that are going to shock you on what the Social Security Administration is able to do, how far back they are able to go and collect money that is owed in overpayments and who they can collect it from. So. Why is this all important? Well, 71 million people receive Social Security each year and 1 million people at least are affected by this and is growing because the Social Security Administration is now understaffed. They can't even handle the volume of, of overpayments and this become a debt that people have to carry for a long time. So, 60 Minutes featured three stories I want to share with you. The first one is of Stephen and Becky Sword and here is their story. So, they live in Chicago and they are both in their 60s and the husband Stephen fell ill and got on disability benefits and then after a while he was able to work a little bit and if you know something about disability benefits you you are allowed to work if you are able but there's a program that you have to get on it's called ticket to work trial to work and 
while you work, you have to report your earnings, just like Social Security before the full retirement age. You have to report your earnings so that your disability benefits will be adjusted based on how much you're making. Well, Steve and Becky Sword said they've been doing that. They've been reporting his earnings to the Social Security Administration diligently. They have receipts and records to show that they did that. Well, that did not change anything. Social Security did not adjust his earnings. And then they received a letter that he owed $51,887 and he had 30 days to pay it back. Now, that is a big deal because when you're on disability benefits, you can only have about $2,000 in assets or your benefits will be taken away. So I don't even know why the Social Security Administration thinks that they can afford to pay this money back when he's on disability and can only have $2,000 in assets unless they're thinking that there's joint spousal income or savings that they can tap into because this debt became a very big stressor for them. They appealed the decision. It was denied. They applied for a waiver. A waiver is saying that you cannot pay the amount and if the Social Security Administration reduces your benefits or takes a portion of it, it's going to affect you negatively. Well, they got denied also. It wasn't until 60 Minutes got involved. So I'll give you an update on that later. But let's get to the second story. And here's a story about Steve and Becky Sword. They had $60,000 in savings. And that's all the retirement savings they have. And they almost gave it all to the Social Security Administration to make this overpayment problem go away. That is how much Social Security has power to cause people a lot of stress and anxiety and, 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 and put them in debt situation that sticks with them for a long time that they cannot get rid of. So the second story is of Gene and Glenn. This is one of the things that the title of this episode clarifies. So Gene, the wife, uh, got on Social Security benefits. Like everybody, you, you pay into the system and then you're ready to retire. You apply for Social Security and then they start sending you a Social Security check. You are trusting that Social Security is sending you the check that you've earned. Well, it turns out that that is not always the case. And if they make a mistake in calculating your earnings, by the way, I thought there were like supercomputers that are sitting in the background calculating all these things, but apparently not. <laughs> so if they make a mistake in calculating your benefits and they send you the wrong amount, they can come back and get it from you, even if you didn't know that you were receiving the wrong amount. And that is exactly what happened here. Gene started getting Social Security benefits six years ago. And then four years into it, they cut off her benefits. So two years ago, they cut off her benefits because they had determined that they paid her $72,000 more. So they sent her a bill for overpayment and had 30 days for her to pay it back. Obviously, she didn't have 30 days, that money to pay back in 30 days. I mean, most retirees don't. So they cut off her benefits and they use that cut off benefit. They're going to use it to pay her overpayment back until it's paid off. And I have an update on what happened with her situation. And then the third story is of Roy Farmer. And this is even the most bizarre of all the stories. So when he was a child, he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy and he received Social Security disability benefits, which his mom received on his behalf to take care of him, as you can see in the picture here. But at the age 11, Social Security determined that he was no longer disabled, which is something that they do. They evaluate your Social Security disability, make sure that you're still disabled according to the Social Security definition of disability. And at age 11, they found out that he wasn't disabled. They cut off his benefits, which is fine. They're allowed to do that. But... Here's the thing. They said that they paid him, overpaid him $4,920 while he was 11. So they overpaid his mom to take care of him. So now that he's an adult and working, they are coming back to get the money. So Social Security Administration sent him a bill for $4,920 now that he's working and, and, and they believe he can pay it. So they want to get the money back. This is a big deal because it is causing a lot of people stress. 
So here's where I want to pause and give you some thoughts on what you should do if you receive one of these three letters. If you receive a social security overpayment letter, you have three options. The first one is obviously pay it back. If you have the money, pay it back. A lot of people don't because some of these bills are, some people received a bill for $120,000. Where are they going to get it from? So here are two other options. Actually, there is also a final thing you can try, but let me walk through the options. So if you get a letter, it's going to give you 60 days where you can appeal. It's, it's, it's advisable to file an appeal because sometimes the Social Security Administration even makes mistakes in sending you the overpayment and how much you owe. So you need to do your own investigation. Call the Social Security Administration, find out what happened, why they think you, you've, you've been overpaid, when do they think you were overpaid, and for how long. And then you should do your own research and if you disagree, file an appeal. Now you have 60 days. It's going to tell you you have 60 days to file an appeal. Here's what I'm going to tell you. You should file your appeal in 30 days because after 30 days, they can start collecting activity. They can block your Social Security benefits. They can take a portion of it. They can intercept your tax returns. They can garnish your wages if you're working. So 30 days when they receive your appeal, they have to make a decision on an appeal before they can do any collection uh, um, activities. So appeal within 30 days. If your appeal is denied, the other option you have is to file for a waiver. A waiver is basically telling the Social Security Administration you cannot pay the money. And that if they take a portion or all of your Social Security benefits, it's gonna cause you severe stress. And they're gonna ask you to provide a financial statement, to provide your income, your expenses, so that they, they can make the decision of whether they think you can pay it or not. So that's an option. And then if that is denied, then you can request a hearing before a social security administrative judge. And in, this is a legal proceeding, so you might wanna get an attorney who can put a case together and fight for you. So, why is this happening? Well, it's because the Social Security Administration lacks accountability on this. I mean, these things can go on for years, and then people don't know that they owe money, and then all of a sudden they get hit with this big bill that they have to pay. And appeals and waivers are rarely granted. So most people get stuck with this bill. And to make it worse, part of the reason is that Congress is responsible for the reason that the Social Security Administration is overwhelmed and not able to deal with these issues sooner. So they happen for years, people are overpaid for years, and then finally the Social Security Administration catches up to it and then sends them this big bill. Part of it is that Congress has been cutting the Social Security Administration budget, and so now, even though more people are receiving Social Security than ever, staffing at Social Security Administration is at its lowest in 25 years. Less people are working at Social Security than in 25 years, and more people are collecting benefits than ever. That is part of the reason why this is happening. So experts have recommended two things that Congress can do to fix this. Number one is to put a statute of limitation on the Social Security Administration on how far they can go back to collect overpayments. Because, I mean, it's ridiculous that, you know, you're sitting there, you're collecting Social Security for a long time, and then, boom, you get hit with a bill or sometimes they tell you that this happened while you were a child and now you are an adult, they want the money back. So there needs to be a statute of limitation. That's what experts are recommending. And also, there needs to be generous repayment options where people are not burdened. People who are on fixed income already, collecting Social Security or disability benefits, and now have to pay a portion of their benefits towards an overpayment that can happen for years. So one of the things the experts are recommending is that Congress reforms how overpayments are done so that it's more generous and doesn't severely impact the people. But as you can see, the Social Security Administration has been busy collecting overpayments. Over the last six years, they are collecting billions. Last year, they collected, you know, 2022, 3.5, you know, 3.35 billion. In 2021, 3 billion. In 2020, 2.86. So you can see... They are collecting more and more, and they're getting more aggressive as the year goes along. And 2024 is going to be no different. So the CBS story that I talked about, there was a happy ending to that. 
And that shows you the power of powerful voices advocating for you. Because 60 Minutes made a lot of noise and we're calling the Social Security Administration as part of running this story and inquiring about these individual cases, even though all three cases applied for an appeal and it was denied, they applied for a waiver and it was denied. Now that 60 Minutes got involved, all of a sudden the Social Security Administration does a 180 and forgives the debt of all three. So here's what I'm going to say. If you get one of these letters and you feel frustrated that you cannot get responses from the Social Security Administration fast enough, contact your representative in Congress, your senator, your congressperson, and let them know this is going on so that they can also write the Social Security Administration on your behalf and help you fight this. Contact your local TV station. Let them run a report. Because you never know what will get the Social Security Administration's attention so that you can get a fair shake on this thing that could stick with you for a long time and cause you a lot of stress and anxiety. So, one thing you cannot do, though, is ignore it. Because if you get an overpayment letter and you ignore it, they are going to take your money. They are going to intercept your tax returns. They are going to garnish your wages. If they can, they are going to take your Social Security benefits to pay it off. So do not ignore it. It will not go away on its own. You have to deal with it. You have to confront it. But as I said, maybe get some powerful people on your side so that the Social Security Administration can really take a look at your case. So that is all I have for today. Please hit the like button if you like what you heard. Subscribe if you are new to this channel. And until I see you in the next video, thank you for watching.